Hello and welcome to another episode of The Top Shelf with me, Shantanu D. Uh, I hope you guys are keeping well and uh, I'd like to thank you for your positive comments and likes and uh, shares and subscriptions, of course. So I thought today we'll do the, uh, the Twisby uh, line of pens. Uh, this particular one is called the Twisby Swipe. It's the latest in the Twisby lineup. And uh, a little bit about the ink that I'm using today. It's uh, a Krishna Lyrebird uh, blue. It, it, it's just blue, it doesn't say royal blue or anything of that sort, but it's a very nice blue. Quite saturated, uh, fairly wet and uh, a lovely color when it uh, comes out as you will see. Now, uh, a little bit about this pen. Now, this is a different sort of pen. Uh, as you can see, of course, it's an extra fine and made in China. This box, the sleeve comes off and you have this very Apple-esque sort of packaging over here of the Twisby. And it opens up, it's all plastic and it has a little um, instruction over here. It says optional use with cartridge not needed during normal use. Now, I don't know what this exactly means. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pen at the end of the day. And uh, I think it's a bit of a gimmick, but uh, let's, see, uh, uh, let's see whether it actually makes any sense. I don't think it makes any sense. So this pen comes with a really massive cartridge. Uh, I believe it's Twisby Black in here. I haven't uh, used it. So as you can see, it's a fairly big cartridge as compared to a lot of other uh, cartridges, the standard international cartridges or proprietary cartridges from other companies as well. And you have this spring. Now this spring is essentially meant to be inside the pen so that the cartridge doesn't move when it is engaged in the pen. So yeah, bit of a gimmick, but uh, I prefer using the converter so I can use my own ink. That's a little bit about the box that it comes in and the accoutrement that uh, this pen has. Let's get to this pen now. Uh, I thought I'll start off with the size comparison straight away so that we can get that out of the way. This pen is uh, pretty much in line with the size of uh, Alami Safari. And just for a size comparison, I've kept the Kaweco Sport as well. Right, now that we are done with that, let's move on to the actual pen. Now this pen is, a, is an interesting pen. The plastic seems fairly cheap, but uh, time will tell how well this lasts or doesn't last. The clip is an interesting clip over here. Uh, to me, it, uh, it reminds me of, uh, if, if you've seen Battlestar Galactica, it reminds me of the Cylon robots, the Cylon Centurion in particular, right? At the finial, you have the Ubiquitous, uh, very red Twisby logo. And this particular edition is called the Smoke Edition. Uh, once you uncap it, and it's not a screw cap, it's a pull-off cap, you have the, the Twisby uh, nib. Now this particular one is an extra fine and it's very similar to the ones that are available on the Twisby Go as well as the Eco, I believe. The interesting thing about this pen, it's very comfortable to write with and I'll tell you why. I'll try and illustrate why. Uh, you can see these little, um, this little bump over here at this point and then there's a flaring again. I really like that, especially because if you want to hold the nib, uh, the pen, pardon me, really low down, it's very comfortable. You can also hold it over here, right at the back here or over here. I prefer to write it, hold it over here. So that's uh, the grip section, a fairly comfortable grip section. And here's the interesting part. The interesting part is this giant converter. And this is a spring sort of a converter. So it's uh, reminiscent of the Twisby Go. So essentially you just pump this a few times inside the ink bottle and you've got to fill in like just two, uh, two pumps. So it's really uh, well designed and it's pretty solid. I haven't bothered taking this out, but as you can see, the ink kind of flows around like that. It's quite uh, fun to watch. As I said, this is a fairly gimmicky pen with a lot of little gadgets, which um, some of them are useful and some of them are not. But I really like this converter. I don't know, more companies need to sort of do this sort of converter. Right, 
Now, let's move on to the writing part of this, uh, this overview. I've prepared a little bit of a write-up beforehand. And frankly, um, I really like the Twisby uh, pens. They're a company that are doing things differently and they're experimenting and that's kind of cool, right? I mean, how much experimentation can you do on a pen at the end of the day? Anyway, the paper is Midori MD and an extra fine steel nib. And one really cool thing about this and I really appreciate about this pen is that it never dries up. I, in fact, for this review, wrote this um, after a week and a half of not using this pen and boom, it started right up and it was not stored, uh, you know, uh, horizontally. I had stored it vertically like this. So kudos to Twisby's, um, you know, um, sealing mechanism for that. And uh, as I said, the grip section, very, very comfortable. And uh, the innovation that Twisby does, I really, really appreciate that. So let's uh, take a look at this pen and how it writes. I thought I'd do something different for you today. I'm currently reading this wonderful book called The Comfort Book by Matt Haig. He's a British author. And uh, this is the book, in case you're interested. It's not catching it in the frame, but yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like. Very interesting book. Very, very interesting book. And my current guilty pleasure, which is something that I like to eat and I've been experimenting with my cooking, is spinach fritters. If you're Indian, it's basically a palak pakoda. Pakoda is the Indian word for uh, something that's fried and uh, deep fried essentially, or a fritter. Try it sometime. And my current favorite word is gadfly. I'll write it in caps. Gadfly. Look it up. It's a very interesting word. And uh, that's a little bit of the writing sample. I'll tell you the wetness of this pen. It's uh, because it's an extra fine, it cannot be as wet, but fairly wet. Uh, this Midori MD paper is an excellent paper. I find it's got a bit of tooth to it and it's not over uh, smoothened and it doesn't have a coating, etc. like uh, some other um, papers have, like uh, say the Rhodia paper or Clairefontaine, uh, etc., etc. So quick, some essays over here. Uh, don't go by the noise of this because I'm writing it on a, on a wooden board over here. So it tends to make more noise and the scratchiness comes out. It's not at all scratchy, it's super smooth. It's wonderful to write with. And uh, that's about it on the Midori paper. I thought I'll give you a little bit of a sample on the regular printer paper. Uh, now the regular printer paper, this is, this is a standard printer paper that's available. Let's take a look at how this performs because this is the real world sort of scenario for uh, fountain pens, frankly, if you ask me. Uh, let's just do the brown fox. The quick brown fox jumped over a lazy dog. Pardon my handwriting, but uh, that's about the performance of this pen on cheap paper. So as you can see, it's pretty good. There is no feathering. The ink is behaving very well. There is no bleed through at the back. And uh, yeah, so particularly if you have uh, extra fines or fines, uh, I find that they generally tend to perform well in uh, lower quality paper as well. And of course, Twisby, I believe, tunes their nibs beforehand or they have them specially made from the nib manufacturer. So yeah, and the ink, of course, plays an important part. This uh, particular ink is very good. Uh, Krishna Liar Bird, available uh, easily in India and uh, other places in the world. 
So that's pretty much it. That wraps up my uh, overview of the Twisby Swipe uh, fountain pen. Uh, feel free to comment and express yourselves in the comment section. And don't forget to like and share and subscribe. You all have been really wonderful. And this makes me want to do more. I'll catch you later and bye-bye for now.